When was the moment you realised something was the moment that would change your life? When was the moment you realised something that would change your life? When was a moment you felt connected to someone else? I was 11 years married, and for several reasons, not because I couldn't conceive, but because I couldn't hold on to the pregnancy. It was 11 years before I had my son. At the beginning, I thought, oh, this is, you know, this is going to happen, so I went on working, and drowned in a river and in a television and did all sorts of things because I thought I wasn't going to hold on to this baby anyway. But miraculously, I did. And when it came to the labour, it was actually quite a good labour because it was only seven hours, which is not very long for a first baby. But towards the end of it, it all got a bit not right. Things started to go wrong. And my blood pressure went very, very high. And I don't suffer from high blood pressure. But my blood pressure shot up to alarming heights. And they had to get this um, special doctor rushed in. And he was in pink pyjamas. You know, he, he'd obviously gone to bed, but he was on, on night duty. But eventually, at about two o'clock in the morning, he was born. And they held up ten fingers <laughs> to say that he was everything was there and he was absolutely perfect. And he had long black hair which curled up at the base of his neck. And they took him away at first for quite a while. So I started to worry again, as you can imagine. And then eventually they brought him back and they gave him to me. And blimey, that was connecting. I really connected with that little person. And I'm still connected to him. And he's 48 now. So I think it would have to be just before third year of drama school. And I hadn't been back to Singapore, which is where I'm from, in over half a year. And I remember at the time, my grandma was really sick and she was old as well. So when I finally got back, we celebrated her birthday. And a few days later, I was with my mum and we'd taken her to the hospital to get some checkups. And I remember her just staring out ahead of me and saying, I don't know what I did to deserve this, something along the lines of that. And um, I just held her hand. And I remember that it was papery and you could see the veins on it. Um, but it was very smooth because she'd always taken very good care of her hands. And I knew that was just a gut feeling that I had to say it now. It was now or never. And I just said to her, Papa, which is grandma in Chinese and Mandarin. I said, Papa, I'm so glad I could make it back in time to see you and to celebrate your birthday. And I think you're an amazing grandmother. And thank you for being my grandmother, which is a difficult thing to say because in Chinese families, oh God, in Chinese families, you don't really talk about these kinds of things. And I was like, no, I'm just going to say it. I have to say it. And I'm really glad I did because that was the, that was the last trip. And, um, I'm wearing her earrings today. <laughs> so yeah, I still, I save a seat for her in every show that I do. And that was the last time I felt a real connection. Yeah. When was the moment you felt truly happy? A moment that I felt truly happy was when I finally got my visa. After four years of trying to manifest it, it finally did last year. I was in Japan at my friend's place. It came in, white envelope, 
red letters, JP Post, <clears throat> opened it, gray bag, take my time kind of, is it this, is it this? And then I rip it open and I see my passport with a UK visa on it. And it didn't make me go, ah, but it was just a quiet, yeah, I got this. Yeah, I got this, this is quiet excitement. And yes, I think, that's, I think that counts as happy. In 2018, my brother ran the London Marathon and it was a moment I was most happy, but also a moment I was most proud. He was running for a charity called Click Sergeant and it supports children and young people and their families who have cancer. All day we were running around London trying to spot him. We were going to every road we could to try to see him and every time we missed him. And we knew he had like less than a mile left of the race and we managed to find this little pitch. We stood there and we waited for about half an hour and we thought, We've missed him again, and we knew he wanted to see us. We were gutted. We thought, we've missed him, we're not going to be able to see him, and he'd run the race and he hadn't been able to have any support along the way. And then just when we were giving up hope, we saw him running around the corner. My, at the time, 29-year-old brother, who was happy, healthy, running a marathon, yet I knew at 13 years old he had cancer and he was being supported by that charity. And I just remember looking at him thinking, like, what a guy he is, like, he is a huge inspiration and I just, I have never felt more proud in my life. That day as a whole was the best day, but that moment in particular, I think, will stay with me forever. When was a moment you realised something that would change your life? I used to belong to a tent theatre in Japan and as the pay was very small, minimal. So I have to do a lot of different uh, sort of extra jobs. And one of them was a graphic design for an English language school. One day, uh, I was invited to their Christmas party where I met one of the teachers, a young woman, uh, who asked me about Shuji Terayama because uh, she, she'd seen one of his plays in London early that year. After the party, we took the same train and I realized it was going in wrong direction from my home. And she gave me a beautiful smile. Uh, it was late night, 17th of December, 1978. And uh, 43 years later, I'm still living with her in England. That's the moment. When our children were quite young, we used to holiday regularly in a wooden hut in the kind of east section of the Scottish Highlands. And it was really idyllic. It was a beautiful place and the hut wasn't very fancy. Anyway, it was a great place because you could walk in the hills or swim in the rivers or cook outdoors and it was perfect for the children. And, but one time we were there and uh, I kind of said, oh, we don't have a smoke alarm in here. And I, I put one in and I never thought about it again and one night about, uh, well it would have been in the middle of the night, we were woken up by this smoke alarm going off and there'd been a few little hot water geysers fitted in the bathroom and in the kitchen and one of them, had the thermostat had gone and it had burnt dry and went on fire. Anyway, it was kind of like terrifying. The place was thick with this really acrid smoke and the children were sleeping and anyway, we got them out and we managed to get up to the main road where we could get signal and we phoned a fire brigade and so on. And I went back down and we were trying to save this building really. Uh, so that crew came out from their beds and were there within half an hour and they put it out and we all got home. But we would certainly have died uh, if not from the f place burning down, which was quite flammable, but much more likely from the, from the smoke, from the either the plastic burning or the insulation. We had put two new smoke alarms in and a fire extinguisher and thought a little bit more about these things. When I was about 20, I think I was 24, I think, um, I went round to my mum and dad's house because I had run out of food or money or something. And I was hanging out with my mum and we were having a really nice time. And then she went a bit weird and she said, um, 
listen, I've got to tell you something. And I said, okay, what? And she said, but please don't freak out about it. Um, I really, I've been really nervous about telling you, and I, but I just want to tell you because it's important. And I was like, okay. And she said, um, they found a lump and it turns out that it's cancer, but it's going to be fine and don't worry about it. Like I'm having an operation in X amount of weeks. And I had this moment of complete clarity where I'm quite a um, attention seeking, self obsessed child who goes to my parents to like, when I need extra love and validation. And I had this moment where I thought, I have to be strong and be like, oh, okay, that sounds really hard. Are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. And then I, yeah, it was a real moment. I think everyone has that in a parent-child dynamic, if you're lucky enough to have them into your adult life, where you realise something about your parents' mortality and also about how being their child becomes quite a different thing as you grow up. Well, then we talked about it and it was really good and she was obviously quite shaken up and then I, we ran out of milk, so I went to the corner shop around the corner and I went to buy some milk. And I left the shop and I called my best friend and I burst into tears. And she was great. And then I was like, it's okay, there's always someone that you can lose your shit on. It just sometimes it moves who that person is. And my mum's fine now, so thank you, NHS. When was a moment you had a lot of fun? I'm going to say graduation, when I graduated university, it was such a boss day. Getting to spend it with my family, my best mates, a ridiculous amount of alcohol, which um, definitely helped the festivities along. It's just so much fun and a moment I was very, very proud of as well. The moment I had a lot of fun was about 4am in a motorway service station. Uh, eating a cold gangster's sausage roll. During lockdown, for some reason, probably midlife crisis, possibly pandemic pan panic, I got really into wild camping. So I had decided to go to Walton on the Nays and camp on the beach there. Beautiful kind of late summer's day, blue skies, walked along the beach, put up my tent and got had a food and the sunset and did some photography and it was great fun. Until the sand flies arrived, there were billions and billions of sand flies um, trying to burrow their way f initially into my flesh, and then I got inside my tent, and then they were trying to burrow their way into the tent, so if you put your hand on the floor of a tent, the whole tent vibrated with the billions of sand flies trying to get at you. And then I woke up with the sea about 10 feet away from me. I'd misread the tides and it looked like I was about to be flooded. So I had a panic and I packed everything to my thing. I left no trace for those who know that's important. There was no idea I'd ever been there. And I hoiked back and uh, about three in the morning was packing into my car, wondering, well, that was pretty crazy. That was an experience. And then I had the sausage roll in a motorway service station. So that, that, that to me is fun. When was the moment you felt your most authentic self? Playing with my little nephew, who is five, in the back garden, playing shopkeepers. And he was the shopkeeper and um, he was handing out change really badly. So something that cost one pound and you'd get three pound 50 change back. Um, but I got so involved in this game and playing with him and kind of got so caught up in his imagination that um, just felt really like a real me, almost. Like the playfulness of it, of going back to being a child and just getting so carried away with um, a five-year-old imagination and I get sucked into it as well. Also, it kind of, kind of harks back to what we do as a job, so it makes me feel very lucky. Definitely one of my favourite most authentic times. When was a moment that was a brilliant adventure? At the risk of being quite twee, I want to say this is a brilliant adventure because we're reopening the National and that's a great adventure and an a, a amazing privilege. So I'm going to say this. That, that might be a bit cringeworthy. Oh.